Hello and welcome back to Mega React. So today we are going to be watching Blacklist Season 1, Episode 7. Last episode, the big thing was Lizzie's husband was kind of cleared from being a spy assassin dude. I do not believe it. I believe Red. I believe her husband is shady. And the fact that he met with one of Red's people... And I think the money he has has Red's fingerprints on it or was traced back to Red somehow. Red. I call him Reddington. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Mr. Spader, the man, the myth, the legend. Maybe he knew about him because he actually hired him for some nefarious reason. I don't know. I don't know. All I do know is I don't trust her husband. I think there's something more going on with him. So let's just hop right into this episode, find out what's going on. If you want to come on this journey with me, like, comment, share, subscribe. Patreon link in the description below. This is Mega. Let's get into it. Hey, it's uh, the dude from House. He was also in Dead Poet Society. One of my favorite movies. Is he a hitman? A killer. Definitely be playing against type for this actor. Sir, you forgot your briefcase. Oh, is it a bomb? Sir, you forgot your briefcase. Is it a bomb? Contagion. What the hell? Some sort of biological chemical or Like a damn horror movie, man. Some shit I see on Fringe. <laughs> turn on the TV. Babe, can you turn the TV on? What channel? Any All channel. of them. <laughs> this is the scene at DC's Red Line Station. Details are still sketchy, but rescue teams and emergency personnel are arriving on the Lady! can't work here! FBI, hey, out of my face. Officer. With me. What do we got? Used to be a biological attack on the red line. How many dead? 37. What am I looking at? A man carrying a briefcase. He boards the train at DuPont Circle. Four minutes elapse. The same man exits the train at the next station, Woodley Park. He's not carrying the briefcase. He left it on the train. And moments later, at precisely 6.42 a.m. Where are we on that briefcase? I reached out to CDC, but they denied our request to release it as evidence. Why? Because it tested positive for trace amounts of radioactive material. We'll have to wait on decontamination protocol. Excuse me. We've got a caller into the tip line. The person claims they can ID our suspect. Is this can we read? Agent Keen? Agent Keen, I have a tip. <laughs> You're a winter, <laughs> not I knew an autumn. It. Stop wearing olive. You know, I don't have time for this. You're not the one who had to listen to that god-awful hold music for seven minutes, which wouldn't have been necessary if you'd take my calls. It's a little snug, don't you think, Martin? This isn't a social call. I can identify the man you're looking for, Lizzie. Okay, who is he? Phones are so impersonal. Why don't we meet for show and tell in 30 minutes? Dembe will forward you a location. The man you're looking for is named Frederick Barnes, a former defense research scientist out of RPAC Systems in Annapolis. You may not be familiar with his name, but you're likely familiar with his work. But he was more than just a research scientist. He was gifted. A savant mm. of government-sanctioned mass killing. A artist. What he was. Betraying your country and auctioning off its secrets. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> you want to compare him to me? Be my guest. I'm perfectly comfortable with what I am. But please, make no mistake, Frederick Barnes is a very special animal, one with the tools and know-how to kill thousands and thousands of people all at once. What he's lacked until now has been the desire. So what's changed? Well, that's the question. But if Barnes is now willing to use his work to kill indiscriminately, then he is quite literally the most dangerous man in the world. Wow. Wow. And he's only number 47? Shit. And, uh, raise his level on the list. Our suspect has a background in biological and chemical warfare. Is it possible that he 
weaponized this disease and somehow modified it to make it more lethal? Technically, sure, but it'd be operating on the frontiers of fringe science. One thing's clear. Fringe that science. Access to what? I'm telling you. Yeah. 90 radioactive isotope. We found traces of it on the delivery. This is a damn device. episode of Fringe Probably right here. Probably used it as an immunosuppressant. He's pissed at you, sir. I'm sorry you're upset with me. That would imply I care enough to be angry. Oh, you're angry. I might do the same in your position. It's easier to blame me for framing your husband than face the truth of what he is. I'm confident you'll come to see that. But in the meantime, we need to find a way to move past this, because for me, there's just no fun in it unless you're there. And if there's no fun to be had, I'm not interested. And I believe red. I believe red. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just naive or I just like Spader so much that I'm letting it interfere with my judgment. Special Agents Keen and Wrestler. Is he in some kind of trouble? Hey, buddy. This is our son, Ethan. Is it okay if I go over Do to Do you have a little vein issue? Uh, uh, do me a favor. Not right now. Go upstairs. I'll be right up. Okay, sweetie? Go. Thank you. He has the disease also. Do That's really his son. Info? And he's looking for a cure, so he has to infect a lot of people to get data, maybe? I need to ask you a personal question about your son. Does he have cursed disease? Yeah. How did you know that? Because I just saw dozens of corpses infected with a weaponized variant of the disease. Frederick is Ethan's father. Does your husband know this? Knew it. it just happened. I thought it was best for the family to keep the secret. Nailed it. The Cuba. <laughs> so, what brings you to my neck of the woods, Gringo? Just you, Manny, it's all you. Let's talk about Strontium-90. Strontium-90? Of course that's what you want. Because you can't want drugs or cosm rockets like <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> Cosm rocket is a fertilizer-filled trash can. I wouldn't fire that high sword at my worst enemy. Manny, I'm sure we can come to a mutually beneficial arrangement. I'm listening. Reach out to your buyer. Convince them to sell back some of their purchase to you at a premium. What kind of premium? My client will put up 10 million for immediate delivery with a hefty transaction fee for yourself, of course. That's why we're friends. Deveo, Hector. Cooper. Ray, you got your 20 on Barnes. Where is he? The courthouse in Arlington. We're on our way in now. Get him before he activates it. All right, everyone. Single file. There's enough people. They could break down the damn door, right? Oh, shit. Drop the gun. You first. I'm going to count to three. If that gun is not on the ground, I will shoot this man. And you will be dead one second after. One. You don't have two, to do this. Three. All right. All right. Drop the gun and kick it away. No way Drop you're dropping gun. that gun, girl. Now. Shoot him. Shoot him. You got the job you got. You got to make tough decisions. Like letting people die to catch the greater, greater evil. Got off the phone 10 to 1. That is, is the house general. Lizzie How grew up in. Let her have it for letting him go. You're on duty, correct? Are you carrying your badge? Of course. Why? Because it's protocol. And would you care to explain why you would surrender your firearm to a suspect in the middle of a hostage situation? It was a judgment call. Barnes was going to kill that officer. I realize you're new with this Agent Keene, but some rules don't have exceptions. You're giving up your weapon. That happens to be top of the list. Yeah, you you made the wrong call. That's why I don't do this kind of job, because I don't want to have to make those calls. You mind telling me what the hell that was? You're asking whether I reported you. The answer is yes. But that moment back there with Barnes showed me that you're unqualified to be in the field. So you would have taken the shot, is that it? Yes. It's easy to make the tough call after the fact, it's isn't it? what any trained field agent would have done, which is precisely the point. And if you can't understand why that's a bad call, 
You don't belong in a tactical unit. He's right. He's right. He's right. 100% right. You're a very lucky girl. Either you've accidentally dialed the wrong number or you're calling because you've hit a dead end. So which is it? Barnes got away and the trail's dried up. Do you know how to find him? I'm not a gumball machine, Lizzie. You don't get to just twist the handle whenever you want a treat. Aha! I like that line. I'm not a gumball machine. <laughs> don't hang up. I'm listening. I need your help. Music to my ear. What was that last part again? I need your help. I need your help. All you had to do was ask. I saw in the coverage there was a survivor from the Arlington attack. You were right about Barnes. They weren't just attacks, they were experiments. He was searching for someone with a natural immunity for Crohn's disease. You mean like Elisa Rubin? That's why she survived the attack. Her test results just came back. She has zero sign of infection. Y'all so need to. He's going to use Y'all need to step it up. I called antidote. this shit early. And Barnes believes he has the cure. I need you to get Ethan to a safe place. Anne, Anne, are you there? What are you doing here? We need to talk. Mrs. Forrester, the police are already on their way. Well then, I don't have a lot of time. Please, I need to see Ethan. It's true, isn't it? What happened to all those people in the subway? It was you. I did what I had to do for our son. There's no universe in which I let you stick that thing in his neck. This is his chance. This is the only chance that he'll ever have. I don't think you're going to stop me. I think she will. Say what you will about Frederick, but someone who's willing to burn the world down to protect the one person they care about. That's a man I understand. Is that meant to be directed at me? Aren't you presumptuous? Maybe a little. you somehow justify your actions by some misguided notion of protecting me? And believe it or not, I appreciate what you do for the Bureau. And at work, you and I are partners. But that's where this relationship needs to end. At work. I don't want you in my personal life. She has a big head, doesn't she? I don't know how to make that clear. It you seems know the big. With drawing lines in the sand. You may not understand how or why I do what I do. But I'm here because you want answers to questions you haven't even thought of yet. Now, if that doesn't matter to you, the solution is simple. I get in this car and I disappear. You have a deal with the government. You have a tracking device in your neck. You don't believe Raymond Reddington could cease to exist in 60 seconds? I <laughs> offer that particular package to clients. I guarantee he could. You're offering to walk away. I'm not going to beg you to allow me the privilege of helping you. That's so say it. the word, and I'm gone. We're going to see, like, uh, measurements of growing on the door or something. There it is. I knew it. I knew it would have something like this. He is her father. Is that what we're being shown here? Or is this misdirection? Damn, I've never seen him look so emotional. Weak. Did he buy it just to burn it down? No way. That would be crazy. Yep. Bye bye house. Bye bye house. You're gone. You're gone. <laughs> That's some quality CGI. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with you. So that was Blacklist, season one, episode seven. Good episode, good episode. We had a, a bad guy of the week who was releasing chemical agents, looking to find a cure for his son. Did he find it? We don't know. I think he probably did. We also got some red back story. The house that he raised his family in. We saw, like I called, where they uh, trace lines on the door for height. I've never known anyone who've done that in real life. But it's a cliche in a ton of movies. 
So I figured they'd have that in here. And yeah, and then we saw him remembering a little girl playing. Is it Lizzie? I'm willing to say so. I think it has been, at least in my mind, it has been confirmed. She is his daughter. That is why he has the connection. That is why he could relate to the to the guy killing people, to burn down the world for his child, to protect them. It's all making sense. It could all just be a big misdirection. And I could be completely wrong, but I do not think so. I do believe she is his daughter, and that explains everything going on. Fantastic, fantastic. Other than that, I still don't trust Lizzie's husband at all. He's crooked, he's evil. But once again, I'm just taking Spader's word for it because I love him so much as an actor. I believe him. He could be playing me for a fool. But solid episode, solid episode. I want to see more of the backstory of Red. Why did he leave his family? Why does Lizzie not even remember him? There's a lot of questions that have still kind of been, kind of not been answered, and I want to know more. I will say, though, <laughs> this episode reminded me of an episode of Fringe. We had the chemical attack, the fringe of science, all of that. So that I found very entertaining. Overall, a very entertaining episode. If you want to be entertained as much as I do, come on this crazy blacklist journey with me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Patreon link in the description below. This is Mega, signing off.